Hi right, everyone, welcome back to This is the Police. Here we are, the newspapers of the morning. The golden bird goes with Thomas Blaine, pregnant woman killer, sent to mental hospital. Freeburg Tribune, according to, her, to Dr. Eleanor Waterbury, Thomas Blaine was a new form of schizophrenia. The fact, Mayor Rogers, not afraid of the competition. Okay, let's get to work. Third time's the charm. We need to get ourselves a better car. Come on. We need some more Mafia ties. Mafia, get us a nice Mr. Italian Greg, car. There was a man here earlier. He left you this. A man? What man? Who let him on this floor? I don't know. I've never seen him before. I asked him his name, but he just ignored me. He was talking on a big telephone. You know, one of those portables. He gave oh, me this big envelope portables. and left. Damn. <sighs> okay, let's see about this. Is it the Mafia, do you reckon? Oh no, it's old Kendrick. Or whatever his name was. Of course, his family. they could have shot them the second they took the photo. But I knew Kendrick and his family were alright. Either way, the message was not that they got out. It meant that I was in. My servitude to the Mafia had begun. Okay, well that's, that's a good thing. New position five seconds Kendrick got away with his family, look at that. Kendrick called it a contract. You sound doomed if you call it what it is. A curse. Yeah. Boyd. Good morning, Jack. I believe you just oh, received this is Sand. my message. Christopher Sand. Who am I speaking the Mafia with? boss. Oh, I'm sorry. I forget some people don't recognize my voice. But I assure you, Jack, if I was sitting right there in front of you, you'd have no trouble recognizing me. Like I was a member of your family. Even better than a wife, perhaps. A wife can betray you. No man is immune. Ooh, I don't harsh. talk to people who don't tell me their names. Oh, Jack, don't be so childish. You're too old to run away from strangers. Yes, we both are. And in our old age, friendship becomes rare and all the more precious. But of course, we must work with new people and find out new names. So if you insist, Jack, let us formally meet. Hello, Jack Boyd. I'm Christopher Sand. Wonderful, Mr. Sand. And what is it you do for a living? <laughs> well, you'll soon find out all about that. I'm a mafia boss, Jack, as you well know. Much more than a simple policeman could ever expect. So I wonder what kickbacks we'll get from the mafia. Longer, Jack, don't turn off your phone. You start today. Here we go. This is where the game really kicks in, I think. Ow. God, that's loud. Eight in ten. It's been my go-to principle since my first day on the job. I've got to let my colleagues hush up what they need to, two out of ten times, so that they'll help me with the remaining eight. Eighty out of a hundred, eight hundred out of a thousand, I'm proud of those statistics. It's not so bad for Freeburg, right? But now I just officially became a mafia whore. I'm supposed to be fearing for my life, for the lives of my wife and children. But the only thing I can think... What's going to happen to 8 and 10? Oh, we can still do it, Jack. Don't worry. I'm sure the Mafia are not going to be that. Um, just got severed leg achievement. Brilliant. Uh, shift B. Okay. Oh, yeah. Old, old Lady Price who won the uh, martial arts training. Look at that. That's incredible. I just still, to this day, amazed by that. No, no music today because of copyright and all that, potentially. Right. Shift B. Let's do your magic. Fire all black cops. Jack, you swore an oath to serve the city. If you can't keep your promises, we won't keep ours. Failed. Ah, I don't care about that. Um, now you can improve your swap team. They've upgraded. Uh, they've accepted the upgrade. Great. So, here we go. Um, so, currently, we can increase their efficiency by 50% or they'll work twice a day. Let's increase their efficiency to begin with, I think. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, early morning. Day six. It's quite quiet. It's quite nice. Any... Oh, here we go. Attempted murder. Sugar Dream Confectionery. A young employee at the factory got into a fight with the manager and is trying to push him to the vat of boiling chocolate. Oh, lovely. 
Uh, that sounds quite serious. So we're going to send Kochi, our, our, one of our best cops, and we're going to send Mazza. Welcome, Mazza, to the crew. 135, try and get you up. Coach, you'll be a great guide for you. Um, this is this is this is a uh, shift lady, isn't it? We got we got Yancey, and he's the only male, well maybe Purdy, but the only male employee we have on this uh, shift. Not that that's a problem. It's just uh, it's just a bit different. Wow, it's quiet this morning. Attempted murder. Coachy Mazza, offender caught, officers and harmed. Good job. Mazza's almost up to average. Carjacking in the suburbs. Parking lot attendant Dylan Burns reports seeing a teenager walking between cars, trying handles in hopes of finding an unlocked vehicle. Before the attendant could approach him, the teenager found an unlocked door and shut himself inside. A few seconds later, the teen drove shrieking from the parking lot, greatly exceeding the speed limit. He fled towards the suburbs. Well, we're not going to send Purdy, because Purdy cannot chase a teen uh, if he crashes the car. So Yancey, you're up. Take um, Sabanki and take take Austin. God, why not? Look at old mother. Oh, old mother Price is not the worst cop anymore. That's incredible. I can't believe she got 110 from that martial arts training. Inc I wish I'd have sent a better officer now. Oh dear. Funny things. But I thought it was going to be like Roy when we lost her to the uh, to become a bouncer. Here we go. Carjacking suburb. Officers have determined the car thief's location. Uh, overtake the criminal and attempt to take him into custody. Overtake the offender and block the road. Catch up with the stolen vehicle and open fire. Uh, overtake and block the road. Yancey, Sabanki, Austin. Good job. Good job, guys. Hostage situation. Oh, okay. Um, a weeping child called in, saying that somebody was holding him against the, his will. They won't let me go outside. They're torturing me and bullying me. I don't think I can keep going. I want to go outside and see Pete. This sounds like a false alarm, doesn't it? This sounds like the parents, have, he's just been told off. So, Purdy, you've got that kind of mothering look. As in, you've never had kids, have you? Uh, take, take old mother Hubbard and um, Asano as well. Female touch, that'd be great. So, we've got Mazza and Kochi. I like how they, they gently bring you into this game. They don't bombard you with things. Let's have a look at the police station. Any... God. Uh, oh, look at this. Grizzly McNally. He looks a great cop. He looks awesome as well. Look at that. Uh, Dan Charleston. These are average cops. 150, but that's not a bad starting point, actually. Um, can we do any more requests? No. Another four days before we can make a request. Okay. Some of the guys have come back to the station. Good job. We got a casino. We've received a call from an angry casino patron. He claims that one of the casino girls that is hanging around his table lifted his wallet, which uh, was carrying a couple of thousand dollars in cash and several credit cards. Casino security shoved him outside, saying that he was drunk, but the man isn't giving up so easily. Right. Could be a false alarm. Um, we're going to send Sabanki and Mazza. Hostage reports. Joseph Lowry's mother wouldn't let him go out and play until he ate his broccoli. Yeah, I thought it was going to be one of those. Oh, from Christopher G. Sands. Jack, we're dealing with a moron who refuses to repay his debts. Says it's the police will protect him. I think it's time to show him whose side the police are on. Austin, you're up. <laughs> Send our worst cop. Yeah, you could just tell that that kid one was going to be a false alarm. But you can't risk it just in case it is a kid being held hostage. And we got the officers to spare. It's not the problem at this time of day. They didn't obviously get any uh, credit for it. But the theft, offender courts, officers unharmed. Up to 190. Maz 155. She's above average, just slightly above average now, which is great. And we'll just see how Austin does with. Oh, something just come in. Deadly assault with the weaponry. Or assault with deadly weaponry, if I read it correctly. At a parking lot exit, a security guard stopped a suspicious-looking van and asked to check the driver's membership card. The female driver reached casually into the glove compartment and pulled out a gun and opened fire. Kochi, Yancey, 
Purdy. Can't send SWAT, you're up. Gonna send three of our best officers. Austin's back. So, um, that obviously went off reasonably well. So, Banky and Mazza are back. Good job. Coming to the end of the day now. Just want to see the, uh, Looks like we have a situation here. the assault with a deadly weapon. Here we go. Police, a police cruiser has caught up with the perpetrator's van. Try to run the van off the road. Use the bullhorn to order the van to stop. Uh, shoot out the criminal's tyres. Let's shoot out the criminal's tyres. Uh, the van takes a sharp turn and crashes through the window of a sex shop. Because, <laughs> yeah. A woman exits the vehicle, grabs the shop attendant and puts a gun to his head. Shoot the criminal in the head. Let go of that man right now. Throw a rubber sock stall <laughs> at the assailant. Uh, we're going to say, <laughs> let go of that man right now. Coachy Yancey Purdy, offender court, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Good job, guys. Good job. Although Purdy, I bet she grabbed that sex doll and a lot of other things as well. Oh, it's going to be a longer day. Look at this. We're going to midnight by the looks of things. Well, that's okay. Everything has been... Everything's been a good day, actually. I don't think anyone's got away from us, have they? The, the ladies and the gentlemen have done brilliantly. The SWAT team have just sat on their haunches all day. Oh, look, we're going. It's gone midnight. My goodness, when they said we're going to longer days, they weren't kidding, were they? But it's all quiet. Freeburg is looking good. I'll have a sit back and have a sip of coffee. Sweet. That is the end of the day. No more happening. Good job, guys. Shift B. Great job. Maz is looking tired. But it's a good job she's going off shift now and get a bit of a rest. Look at old, old Lady Price. Fantastic. End the day. Day 7, 21st of July. The Golden Bird. Racist gangs run wild in city. The Freeburg Tribune. Investigation into Francis Kendrick could resume. And the facts. Second tower to be built in Freeburg. Second tower. Oh, this crappy old car. The people of Freeburg have built up a tolerance for the petty horrors of modern life. You'll never see crowds gathering around a beaten passerby. Folks rarely even slow to gawk at a car accident. And street theft doesn't turn heads anymore. Been a long time since people got worked up about stuff like that. So when I ran into a troubled crowd on the way to work, I knew there was something serious going on. Something bad enough to knock these people out of their daily rhythm. And we're talking about people who would step over a corpse if it was blocking the door to the coffee shop. But apparently all it takes is a bunch of leaflets, or spreading broken glass across Main Street, or releasing a couple of hundred rats in the ice arena. The mysterious figure taking responsibility for these strange acts goes by the alias Robespierre, Nobody knows who he is, what he wants, or what all this adds up to, from the buckets of lard spread on the sidewalk to the front door of City Hall covered with ostrich feathers. But this strange cross between childhood pranks and cheap theatrics has got the people all worked up. Everyone understands when some Freeburg crook satisfies the basic human need to rob and kill. But when someone steals a lion from the local zoo and locks him in a cell below the courthouse, the people start asking questions. Myself, I kind of like this Robespierre. It's not just the pranks he's pulling or his green bull's head emblem. I just like his funny nickname. Robespierre? Really? Who does that make me? The Marquis de Lantanac? <laughs> I don't think so. In the old books about revolutions, I fancy myself the old gunner who goes off to war with a bag of damp powder. Or maybe the innkeeper who tops up the beer kegs with mop water. Hmm. It's something to think about. Ah, so Robespierre is coming into our story by the looks of this. We saw his uh, name mentioned in one of the papers earlier. Okay, Martin Stute is your new... Deputy, welcome, Stute. Stet. Birch, what now? I accidentally broke my bathroom mirror while I was getting ready for work. My dad always said, oh, seven years bad luck, but I don't want 
silly superstition. I it probably will, won't last seven hours, but it might be a good idea. No, get into work. Robbins, I was up all night and couldn't sleep, and now I have this ringing in my ears. Can I take the day off? No, come in. You're fine. You're absolutely fine. Right, shift A. Oh, Weaver, why are you down on energy? Shift A. Oh, God, we've got Grant. Shift A. Come on, let's do your magic. Um, So we can buy some more music if we want to. But you know what? We're, we're trying to save up half a million dollars here. No, we're not going to waste time on music. No, 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 no. Right, how's our investigations going? The robbery case. We haven't got any frames for it yet. We need to we need to work on this today, guys. We I want you all over that. No gangs, no archives. As our deputy, right? What can our deputy do for us? Send um, your staff for training. Send employees to informal outdoor party. Nice. Hire a snitch. Oh, this all costs money. Hire a snitch. Pay an employee to gather important information for you. Oh, we don't have the money for that at the moment. That's fine. Right, theft. At the Bigfoot Athletic Shoe Company, or shoe shop, a shoe store clerk reports that two teenagers found the most expensive sneakers on display, tried them on, and then, without paying, ran out of the shop wearing the new shoes. Um, who we're going to send Kojak and send send Grant because she's useless. We need to lever up, and Kojak's a decent cop, so hopefully he can do something. Uh, three more days till we can make a request to City Hall. Um, I really want to get Grizzly. But um, we don't have any slots available at the moment, which is a shame. Hopefully the detectives will bring up some more of that theft investigation, because we want to get that one solved. Haven't got anything on that at the moment. But th from we think it's an Asian motorcyclist, grab the uh, the necklace off the lady. Attempted murder. Oh, they've got to do the theft first, the trainers. Uh, a teens are standing around smoking not far from the store, admiring their new shoes. Try to grab one of the boys. Hey, mind if I have a cigarette? Time to return those shoes. Kojak Grant. Good job. Even Grant managed to do something. Well done. Uh, right, let's have a look at this murder. A man returned from a walk earlier than usual and found his young wife in bed with her lover. The maid called the police when she saw the husband taking the hunting rifle from the wall. Oh, attempted murder. Beg your pardon. Right, Stovall. Uh, actually, no. Vandal, Samadhi, take Birch. And take Birch Jr. Send the Birches in first. Hopefully, they'll get their heads blown off. So, we got Robbins and Stovall still with us, which is good. Kojak has gone his way back. Municipal assignment, City Hall. Today is Freeburg. We are hosting the premiere of Back to the Future. Okay, this is obviously set in the 80s, if you haven't already guessed. The film's distrib distributors have asked for the city for an officer to stand on the door and ensure that all visitors don't bring handheld cameras and theatres. Robbins, that sounds like a job for you. Kojak and Grant are back. Good job. Okay, the attempted murder, offender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Good job. Look at this. The birches are almost usable. They are almost usable officers now. Oh my goodness, we are really training those guys up. Look, birch has even overtaken Grant. Good God. Freeburg Elementary School. A young father, deprived of his parental rights, tried to pick up his daughter from school. When she wasn't allowed access... Sorry, when he wasn't allowed access, she, he attacked the teacher. I can't stop saying she. Uh, knocked her to the ground and started kicking her. Well, that's not on. That's not on. Stovall, take Grant. Go and sort that out. It's not the teacher's fault. The teacher's just doing their job. City centre. Mr. Boyd. I have a very sensitive issue with our mutual friend, uh, Charles Dilly. I have no idea who that is. Or Dial. D I'll call him Dilly. Um, said you could help me. As you may be aware, I own the largest musical store in Freeburg. Recently, my ex-wife got half of my record collection in a lawsuit. There's a lot of rare records. My ex is very afraid of the police and always tries to act like a law-abiding citizen. If some of your guys went over there in uniform and told her those records were evidence in an important investigation, she'd just smile and hand them over and give them whatever they asked for, not even check the warrant. 
Birch. We'll send the Birches just in case we need to... Um... Oh god, we've got to send three officers, do we? Okay. He looks sly anyway, doesn't he? Mafia assignment. Oh my goodness. Christopher G. Sands. Jack, we have something going on today. Engineering plant at 10.09. We wouldn't want any police crashing the party. I think four grand will be enough for the... Oh yeah, hell yeah. So 10 o'clock, we need to remember that. Ten, just, just before 10 past 10. Ignore the engineering stuff. Okay, Gallery of Modern Art. A guard says someone got into the exhibition hall. School... School pictures of penises on the artwork and hid in the closet. Kojak, Vandal. No, Kojak, I think you can cover that on your own. Assault report. Stovall Grant, offender court, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Good job. Grant is now back in front of Birch. This is a race going on here. Um, Ulrich Bieber, city centre. Uh, Chief, we helped Ulrich Bieber and got thanks to us, he got. Um, Gennaro Crespo album and Master True, Birch Jr. Oh, uh, prefers glam. So he was really sad. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> Birch Jr. prefers glam rock. Uh, so he was really sad at the bar the time the shift ended. Ah, oh, he's gone to the bar. But okay. But I thought he said he was going to give us three grand. Oh, no, no. That, that's the Mafia is going to give us four grand. So that's three grand from the uh, the record deal. Up to 11 grand already. That's not too bad. We're getting there slowly. Looks like we have a situation. Disorderly contact. Conduct. Put my teeth in. All the lights are on when the police arrive. The museum caretaker explained that he's only had the job a couple of weeks and he's worried he's going to be fined over this foolishness. The police calm him down and he points them to the bathroom stall that the artist locked himself in. Come out with your hands up. Enter the adjoining stall. Break down the door. Come out with your hands up. Oh, a terrified, tearful young man holding a knife insists he's engaged in some kind of performance art and that no one understands him. He refuses to surrender and is threatening to stab himself. Try to grab the knife. Tell me more about your work. Don't worry, you're not in any trouble. We just want to talk. Yeah. Go, Jack. Good job. Offender caught. Officer unharmed. Plus ten. Whew. So, Birch Jr., with his disgust that there was no glam rock, has gone down to the pub. But he's still plus 50, which, you know, it's, it's not bad considering where he was. Birch and Grant are in this epic battle to be uh, last but one decent cop officer. Right, coming up to uh, 9 o'clock now. Remember, the Mafia thing is at 10. We don't interfere in that. Well, it's gone all quiet for a change. Where's Robbins? Oh, we sent him to the, um, the Premier, didn't we? The evening... Ah! Oh, this is the Mafia thing, so let's not send anyone to that. We'll let that tick down. Tick. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the robbery. Oh, we got three new frames from the investigation. Good. Okay, my husband was difficult to finance and blah, blah blah blah. I was carrying my antique necklace, pawn shop, ripped on blah blah blah. Okay, so we've got the motorcyclist. Uh, that's a, he's obviously coming towards her with the motorcycle. He grabs the bag and then he drives off. Boom! That's an easy one. Uh, Chinese immigrant uh, Kun Yin Lin, uh, recently expelled from university. Good job, guys. Right. So, um, engineering report, offender escaped. Good. Christopher G. Sands, thank you for doing as we ask. Here's the amount we agreed upon. I thought we said 4,500. We'll take the four grand. Okay. Beasley, you want some backup. Um, take Kojak and take Grant. Sydney, oh, here we go. City Hall. Jack, you must have seen the newspaper stories about Thomas Blaine. Oh, he's the one who shot the, uh, the pregnant woman. I think she was a suicide bomber. The retired cop who went uh, schizophrenic and shot the pregnant woman. That's what I just said. To ensure this tragedy doesn't repeat itself, we decided to conduct psychological testing on all the cops over 50 years of age. That's pretty much all my cops. Uh, it includes you, Jack, tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, God. Dr. Eleanor Waterbury is waiting for you in her office. Don't be late. Okay. Great. We got a psychological report tomorrow. Or psychiatric test or survey or something. Ah. Uh. 
Are we going to get our second case closed with the detectives? That would be awesome. Here they go. They're, they're at his house now. Look. Boom. Robbery case. Beasley, Kojak, Grant. Offender court. No one's harmed. Great. Good job. Uh, we were able to arrest all suspects. Look at that. Beasley is 390 and he's going great guns. Moser is now an average detective. That is awesome. Well done, guys. And Grant has rocketed to 115 professionalism points. Good God, Grant. Where did that come from? Ah, and it's three o'clock. End of the day. Wow. That zip by, didn't it? Well, Team A, or Shift A, is doing great. Look, Stovall is still the king of the castle with 450 professionalism. We got 295, 220, 205 by the uh, the team catching on quickly. Robbins is on 180. Was, went to the Back to the Future premiere. Birch Grant and Birch Jr., although still pretty poor, they are climbing the ranks pretty well. And our detectives are looking great. Cool. Well, there you go. That's the end of this day. Another fantastic... No, a really fantastic day by the, the, the shift, B, shift A there. Another good job by Shift A. They're doing a great job, actually. And we had our first successful job with the Mafia, so we're in with them. I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this, and join me next time for the next installment of This is the Police. I'll see you then.